Fennec MEP, you've just come out of the film uh, 73 Cars, BAFTA winning, award winning film. What did you think of the film? It was a great film, it is a great film, very emotional and uh, this film has warmed up my heart because uh, it shows a farmer with very good feelings for uh, the animals and it shows that farmers could change their life going away from the normal animal farm business and uh, become a vegetarian, vegan farmer. So it is a hope and uh, I wish that many other farmers would look this film, 73 Cows, and start to think about what they are doing with the farm animals. What inspired you? Um, basically, I read about Jay's article online. Um, sorry, I read about Jay's story online when my wife showed me an article. And I just thought it was such a gem of a story, you know. Somebody who's doing something based entirely upon their ethics and their morals rather than what they think they stand to gain from something. It's quite rare that you get somebody like that, and so I knew that there was a, a story there. Um, I just didn't realise at first that I would sort of be the one to tell that story. Has it changed your view of, on the meat industry, and um, has it changed the way you, you, you live or the things you eat? So I was vegetarian when I started uh, working on 73 Cows, and I'm vegan now, and I think... Part of that is because I was kind of going that way anyway. Um, and a big part of that is through talking to Jay and Capture and also because when you do a documentary about something, you naturally want to learn as much as you can about the subject. And so I just took on lots of information and watched lots of films and spoke to lots of people and it just reaffirmed a decision that I'd kind of made already and it might have just fast-tracked it. But yeah, I've been vegan now for about six or seven months or something like that. It was a wonderful, happy, life-enhancing story of the magnificent transition that Jay and Katcher had done in what was a traditional family beef-rearing farm. They realised that they could no longer betray the animals that they had been rearing by loading them into the trailer and taking them off to the uh, abattoir and the horrors of a slaughterhouse. And so they decided to change their farm entirely to uh, vegetable uh, and organic production. And uh, as I said, it's, it, it's a wonderful beacon for the future. You're an MEP who's known for being very involved in animal welfare issues. You've also written a book. What is the message in your book? I am a British Conservative, perhaps not um, what most people, I'd even go as far as to say I'm an obese British Conservative, uh, not at the typical sort of person that is banging on about animal welfare. It was only after I arrived here and had the time and the access to really look into the way our food is produced, um, uh, and there's such a wide range of issues in which mankind abuses animals. Um, I pen this little book, Animals Can't Vote But You Can, um, just to try and encourage people to stop and think about the choices they make every day, whether it's the, what they buy in their local supermarkets, the clothes they choose to wear, what they choose to watch or participate in when they go on holiday, 101 individual choices can make a huge difference to the lives of millions of animals worldwide. It's not often one gets to meet the star of a film, but you are, in a sense, the star of 73 Cars. Why did you agree to be the subject of this film? Um, I, I think it took me by surprise. Um, Alex seems uh, such a nice guy, and um, I didn't know what it was going to lead to. It seemed quite innocent at first. Do you think it could change the way people see farming um, f further afield, not just in the UK? Um, well, the first thing to say is that everything that's happened has been unexpected along the way, um, so it's difficult to say what's going to happen in the future. But... I can only hope that people will see it and, and think um, 
we don't need to do what we've done for the past few thousand years and um, what we're doing isn't fit for future generations and we, we've got to change now immediately as soon as possible. We see some movement from consumers cutting down on meat, changing the way they look uh, at what they consume generally. But do you hear from fellow farmers? Have farmers come up to you and say, I would like to do what you've done? No. Um, most, most of the people we've spoken to um, in our region um, see it as a threat. Um, they don't understand it. They can't understand why we sacrifice the value of the cows be out of principle and uh, they think we're quite mad and and uh, and that they their only concern is at the moment that it, it, it might turn consumers away from eating meat and that's a problem from their point of view we're here in the european parliament very significant part of the EU's budget is the common agricultural policy. In the discussion, we heard, heard some concerns about where that money goes to, to more industrialised farms. How could the EU support this transition to more um, plant-based farming? I think th the first thing is that the politicians need to recognise that change is necessary uh, until they actually accept that we need to do things differently they're not going to provide the, the resources that farmers need and um, it, if, if a farm can be supported by a specialist manufacturer such as um, I met somebody from Sweden who has been supported by Oatly um, um, I think they're helping they, they, they did help him to switch to oat production for their particular needs but I think that's a very niche uh, situation and um, it, that won't lead to the scale of change that's really necessary. I think it needs positive advice, subsidies and uh, a general climate conducive to people changing the way they farm. Uh, in the film you see that you obviously like the cattle a lot and I did think seeing them, many of them being sent away that you're going to miss these animals, so uh, do you miss the cattle that were on your farm? Very much so at first, but uh, we, we're consoled by the, by the idea that they're being cared for very, very efficiently <laughs> and carefully where they are at the moment. And um, we send as much money as we can to help to feed them. And um, the ones that have stayed on the farm are just pets and we, we just love interacting with them um, without that feeling at the back of your mind that um, they're not going to stay with us all their lives. So it's the ones that we, we, we have on the farm we really love and we're really happy that we can just look after them.